from Falcons in Iran. Gideon and Mirko, hope you guys are ready because we're throwing it over to you guys. Man, that first place, we're gonna see whether our, our Malaysian representatives has what it takes to even take yes. away a singular game in this best of seven from the final bosses, the gods of the games. Falcons, AP, Brent, as we start rolling into the land of dawn, it's gonna be SRG on blue side up against FCAP on the red. SRG were definitely able to make Falcons AP Bren lead in game number one. It looked dominant for Falcons AP Bren at the start, but then towards the mid game, SRG with Yums always looking for the fights. They were able to drag them down to the ground to actually make it a head on battle. Yeah, I'm surprised that they were even to get the Falcons. They're not clipping their wings just yet, but mm -hmm. definitely brought them to eye level, which is surprising. But looking at the emblems so far, seems pretty standard all across the board. However, this starts from the side of Falcons AP Brent. In particular, Kyle TZ, he opted to go for his orange buff first, then make his way down towards his purple, which does give an indicator that maybe they would just want to break the Faraga armor relatively early, just so that Flap TZ has a better time in lane. Yeah, for sure. I think getting rid of the Faraga armor is going to be top priority for Falcons AP Brent, because we were talking about this extra work pick as well off cam the export is really great in lane in mm -hmm. the team fights here up against a lot of burst heroes like the valentina and even the nolan he will struggle a bit but as long as cram can utilize the lead he gets in the lane if the rest of the team is able to also just let him do whatever he pleases in the lane it's going to be a-ok -okay for cram mm -hmm. now we get to the one minute 30 seconds and nothing has happened down by the exp side which gives cram indication that hey it's probably safe on this side of the map for now and as we notice kyle tz he's on the top side right he's looking for an opportunity maybe for C Seeing that SRG was going to read into the EXP attack, because look at them, they're sending four members down. Again, for Falcon Safety Brand, it's all about dealing with Cram, the Faraga armor, because he's going to have auto prio. Especially with Stormy coming around, he gets that passive down, and Cram will just burn those minions for the passive to kill everything. Mm -hmm. Now, Turtle is up. Purple buff is needed for Sakai to actually stand a chance. But Kyle, he's power farming this entire time. And in terms of like the laning phase, honestly, this is a way more uh, manageable game compared to number one. Good damage there. On to few. Placed down by the Cursed Blast. But take a look at Falcon AP Brand, who are the ones on the turtle. Holding it down for now. Flap TZ has the penalty zone. Can go for the zone, but Skies is already rotating over. Cal TZ can be pulled back by Yomes. Eternal Guard coming down as well, but Oakwen will be able to pop the in his fury straight into the flicker. Knocking two members up. The SOD connects, but no one's taking it just yet. Oakwen gets blasted down by the last insanity, and it will just be one for one. Phew. Going back and forth on the Valentina. Just with a turtle advantage. Falcons AP Brand up top. Super Marco blazing duet. Innocent wants to go for the pin down, finds it. But there will not be a solo kill. Not now. Man, Innocent refuses to let go of any farm. He's like, I'm gonna pin you to the wall real quick. No. Let me quickly get the cannon. All right, we're done with the trade, okay? We're done. No more, no more afterwards. But at the end of the day, Falcons AP Brand, despite trading both supports for each other, they were able to achieve that turtle. So if we're talking about a matter of inches, it's whether or not this turtle shield is going to make a difference in the upcoming engagement. Right, because right now it's pretty passive between both top and bottom side, EXP and as well as gold. I think it's going to be that way for the most part because Falcons AP brand they have they're just so good, even in losing matchups, to make it even in the lane. They know that they are just here to farm in the bottom lane. The Terizla is a losing matchup up top, even the Claude is a losing matchup, but somehow they're farming really, really well. You can even see in the XP, Claude Marco's ahead. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> They've got to take their time with this, right? They're looking for these big opportunities to make big plays. And I think I'm looking towards few and as well as Stormy in mm -hmm. this particular game, right? Because I think that's the big game changers for each team. We're expecting Flap TZ to look for the big engage. We're expecting Cram to peel. That's pretty obvious. Even for Ogwen as well as you, the big engage just happened off their battle spell timer. So keep in mind, 30 seconds on and 25 seconds on both. That's a fracture damage. That's the burst damage that we were worried about for Cram on the X-Borg. Say goodbye to the Faraga armor. Skies now in the bottom lane. Goes for the fine blaze just towards the minion waves. Cal TZ to get those flap. The hammer swings a few times. Skies gets zoned away from this turret. Will be able to pick up that last XP cannon minion. But still, a lot of resources down now for Skies half HP. Yomes, I'm offended, didn't connect you. Ooh. Able to use the last insanity anti-CC to escape. Yeah, nah. 
I think at this point, they're just going to have to take their time, right? I, I definitely think that at this point of time... Wait, hold on. That doesn't look right. Kram's got a little more health than that, but still, good patience coming in from Skies, right? His ult is such a big resource for him that he needs to hold for as long as possible. At the same time, where's the Minoan's Fury? Again, time not that well. Eternal Guard Minus Fury, though, catches them. Skies gets knocked up straight into the penalty zone. And now with the last insanity, Kram, he's trying to burn them down. Is forced to flicker backwards. Falcon's AP Bren. It's Fuel with the Steel on the last Insanity. Oguin's trying to pin him down under that turret, but Cram knows better than to stay in the bottom lane all alone. Innocent up top. Now Kyle TZ comes in. Innocent still able to survive for a bit, but not for long. Not against the TZ air. Nicely done coming in from Kyle, right? I mean, if you can... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Calm down! Ooh. They really want to deny Skies any kind of farm. It's getting tough for Skies. Three levels down against the Nolan. That was a threat that we were talking about as well in the draft. The Nolan can match the farm speed of Ling. So with the Terizla, so much prio. Now with Ogwen walking forward against Kram. Flap TZ can swing the hammer down with the cannon minion. The Skies will be forced to just go for that purple buff up top. Let's look at this replay one more time here. Because again, the way, oh man, the fact that Kyle yeah. TZ just using the ult as a gap closer rather than I want the burst damage, knowing that Innocent still has his dashes just goes to show Falcon's AP Brand, they got really clean communication. Like Super Marco's informing him about what is available to make these plays effective. Calculated. Always calculated. Maybe that's why he earned the name TZ mm -hmm. behind him, right? But again, for SRG, it'll come down to how they're able to slow the game down, but then make those off angle engages. Yums again in the mid lane, getting chunked down. You have a game fact. Yep, Stormy leads MSC 2024 with the highest average assist per game at 10.2. He's not looking for those big plays. But, oh, wait, hold on. Speed up his but the Lizzo holds it on the back line straight into the placing to win by Super Marco! What the heck was that? Skies gets the depth of plays, but Super Marco just guns him down to pick up a maniac! What a maniac coming in for your boy Super Marco at one. HP! We need a replay of that. We 100%. So we see the initial pushback. Three. What? Eternal Guard hits. Where does it happen? Penalty Zone hits three. And Kyle just has so much damage. He has so much. He sets it up perfectly for Super Marco to walk in for free. And despite wow. all of that, it just goes to show the jungle diff at this point of time. The three level lead that Kyle TZ has really making the difference. And let's look at the gold difference. Yup, he's still Aww. 2k ahead. Super Marco. There's a reason he has Super in front of his name. Time and time again, he decides to flex that Super name. Standing in front, no, below a Ling. He got knocked up. He's like, nah, purify. He was getting stabbed. He's like, nah, I got guns. He's so brave. I don't know. It, sometimes it feels like he teases people like, oh, I'm going to take off the bulletproof vest <laughs> this time. Oh, nah, <laughs> they're still plating underneath it. Chokes on you. <laughs> But with this being said, right, Dr. TV Bread, they slipped up in game number one when Slango Red Giants hit a power spike, and they managed to out-micro them in a singular fight to turn things around and find that momentum. I'm expecting that Falcon's AP Bren is going to take a much slower approach this time. And yeah, that's what we're seeing, right? They're not sending everybody. They're just, oh, if we hit it, then sure. If we don't hit it, we start backing up and waiting for the refreshes. Mm -hmm. It's all about poke, I feel, right, at this point of the game, especially considering for Kram, he wants to stay in these team fights for a long time. So if Falcon's AP Bren can just burst that Faraga armor down, Nah, you can't really do much anymore. You're going to be forced to wait for the reset, for the regen of the Faraga armor. But yeah, man, Super Marco. He's like Kakashi with his mask, but Super Marco with his vest. Technically, you take it off, there's another vest down there. There's another plate down there. But at least for Skies, he is looking for farm. On the right place, Yums. I thought he was going to be bursted down there, knowing how far ahead Kyle is. But he just walks up, and Skies is able to get a trade. Few, though. He can swap us if he wants it all. I don't, he I don't think he spots it all. He checks it and he cancels it just to slow him down even further. How annoying. Worst yet, I think that Falcon's AP brand are in a great position because honestly, few he has his two frontliners to create that space for him, and SRG don't have that same capability. Stormy is playing at the very edge of his max range, where few he can stay as far away as he wants to. Oh, Flap Easy set it up for me, and Ogren follows up. I can go in and out. Oh, look at the burst damage. On towards him, beating out the Eternal Guard for Peel Skies is forced back as well. Kram is very low. And they can just stand there. Innocent up top, finding a turret. But look at that view again. Able to find the last insanity. That's a blazing duet. Stole Skies! Steals the Lord somehow, some way. Marco gets the unstoppable. And Innocent gets a turret. 
That's a tempo breaker. That's the clearest indication. Look, wait, 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 wait. Let's see. Well, let's see. Look at the Lord Health. We know what's going to happen. Tempest the Blades comes out the penalty zone. Lands wow. first. Man. Two levels. A millisecond off. Kyle didn't get his retribution off. He wasn't expecting it. That's really unfortunate. Oh my goodness! And not to mention, right, after everything they got, the Eternal Guard, they also forced Yooms to actually flicker out of the way. Ew. <laughs> Technically, that's unacceptable! Falcon's AP brand set that up perfectly. They had everything in their cards. But then, up top, that's where Innocent got picked off as well, by the way. But for SRG, Miracle Workers, Kyle. Walking up again, trying to get that passive down, unable to do so. Skies wants the 1v1. Ooh. Jumps back forward, doesn't have the purple buff, needs to respect that the energy can be depleted. Yom's able to escape, Eternal Guard, knocking off TZ out. Penalty zone from Flap, not connecting there. A Remus saying, oh. Marco even almost getting bursted down. Forced to blink back with the BMI, but now Skies is looking for him, jumps forward, and will be able to find it straight into the Spear of Destruction. A shutdown as he gets out. The fadeaway jumps out, autos, doesn't even move. One more auto and walks off. Holy, SRG find a way to crawl back into this game despite everything that's happened. It looks like Falcons AB Red, they're trying to regroup here. They go. Would I, I don't want to say that it was an overheat, but there are definitely moments where Falcons AP Red were poking a little too hard for pretty much no value whatsoever. It could be an adjustment to SRG anticipating the pushback, or we could say that Falcons AP Red, they were hoping for a little bit more from SRG. I don't know what it is, Gideon. Falcons AP Red had such a big lead. Cram taking a whole lot of damage. Even the execute there on the Sky Piercer towards the Viraga armor. I didn't know you could execute the frog arm. Yeah, I didn't know that either. It's Doesn't happen very action. often here, but then again, it's not like we see x -Borg every other day. When was the last time we saw x -Borg? Oh, I think that was in the group stages already, man. Because that was the only time we got to see, like, you know, Terizla through. Once mm -hmm. we got into the playoffs, man, the Terizla definitely was one of those things where, like, we gotta get, we gotta push him out of the way. But at this point in time, we look at the damage dealt, no one's still on top, and even the damage taken, right? Yep, Yikes. there we go, x -Borgs, as well as Terizla, both on top with, you know, Ruby, not too far behind. And I think that Yum so far, hasn't found a crazy I'm offended yet, right? I think that's the hardest part. Whoever's been throwing the first uh, their abilities first tends to lose that match. But with the winds of nature from Slider and Super Marco, maybe he can make the super play. That's something that we have been seeing a lot from Falcon's AP brand. But just in the few last minutes, it's been SRG finding those miracle plays, finding those super plays with a, an assassination from Skies. Somehow, it's like a timer for SRG. Every time they reach the mid game, they suddenly get a massive power spike. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to figure out, why did Yumes use the I'm Offended onto Ogun there? What was he trying to bait out? Maybe he was hoping that Falcon AP Brand is going to overheat. Mm -hmm. I think for both of these teams, <laughs> honestly, they're looking a lot more similar the, as long as this game goes on in this best of seven, right? They're baiting each other to try and overheat, baiting each other to overextend, and Yumes know that the I'm Offended comes back up early. Started to eternal card. I mean, this Fury and the Flicker combo. Kyle on the back line trying to find the assassination, but Innocent is able to blink out forward. Uh -oh. Now, in the back, Skies goes for the chase, the assassination on the Kyle with the Flicker, follower from Yumes. Skies! continues it with a tap of the blades, breaks it out, and is in the midst of it all. Catches a lot of blades, Innocent with a cleanup. And now it's Super Marco running for the hills. Flap TZ and Ogwen cannot deal with this Lord Take from the Red Giants. Oh, and now with the Lord Take, they can almost guarantee at least one of these inhibitors. If they can get at least one, they can set themselves up for a really good Lord Take afterwards. But it all comes down to the real question, who's gonna overheat first? Because Falcons AP Brand have not been able to get maximum efficiency off of their abilities just yet, despite everything that has happened, right? It looked like Owen got a really good engagement. And more importantly, we did see Kyle having an insane angle mm -hmm. right straight through the mid lane at the cost of a bunch of flickers from SRG. This is why the Nolan it's really good, especially when you're in the lead, right? But when you get to the 50-50s, when the enemy team was able to weather out the early storm, it's very tough for you to enter these team fights. There's a Don't Run Wolf King. There's obviously a Spear of Misery. But let's take a look at the Siege now. Three mini waves crashing down at the Falcon's AP Bren's base. Innocent, front of the pin down, straight that I'm offended. Over and over with the Eternal Guard, catching that TZ. Oh. Minus Fury used up, but it was canceled by him taken down. Now Sky jumping to the back, using the Sky Piercer. Forcing the Winter Crown out. Flap TZ with a DPC, locking Yums down, but he has the immortality. He can still survive. Sky is again poking you. Falcon's AP Bren, they live, they live to tell the tale, to see another day. But SRG don't want to stop there. 
The siege continues. This time to mid lane with Yomes. Over with the conceal already. I'm offended on the few straight into the stab down. Few taken down, traded in. Blue from Marco with a blazing duet. Finding one, going for the trade. The base is open though. Sky assassinates Marco straight into the BMI. Kyle, first in the world. Now jumping in with a fracture. Oh. Not able to get him. Innocent 1 HP. Sky's going for it. Minions Fury out of the Catamanian. Now Ogwen, the master. 2v1. Tempest of Blades. Ogwen taken down. Burnt to the ground. Penalty Penalty zone. It. It's a penalty zone. As Flap goes for it, but Sky oh. buys the immortality. And they drag the Falcons to ground level. They're looking eye to eye. Even gods have to take one step down. To see this new threat. <laughs> First of all, we can at least say it's not a sweep because now it's a 1 1. But we got to talk about the miracle timing coming in from SRG somehow, even the first game and the second game, somewhere in mid game between yeah. 7 to 12 minutes is where they really start to shine. It's, it's the same idea from the previous game where somebody has to force the initiations and the spells coming up from a fact of saving and then Sekai cleans up. It's like a you know, the Sky Prince is uh, going down and is delegating himself as the cleaner. I'd hate to say it, but their comeback victory was, in essence, a two-step process. Number one, get Sekais into a position wherein he can actually get shutdowns. And then number two, capitalize on that and out-team fight Falcons AP Bren. That, that's exactly what happened ever since that turnaround. Honestly, Sakai is playing like his idol, man. He's starting to play like Kyrie. Like, this is the, the kind of highlight plays that we expect from amazing junglers. But speaking of which, in, in, in this matchup, both junglers did absolutely amazing. Like, with this being the trend for game number one and game number two, you really can't say any team is going to win or lose based off a, of a small lead that they have. I feel like even two or three thousand lead isn't that big of a deal when we're talking about both teams. Yeah, Sekai has cemented himself as absolutely one of the best.